Time for our Tri-State Office Furniture Tweet of the Day. It's Chris's partner, Andrew Filipponi, from the PM team. TJ Watt has been more productive in his first four years than Miles Garrett, Joey Bosa, and Khalil Mack. All of them got paid. He's missed one game because of injury in his career. The Steelers have the second most cap space in the NFL for 2022. You pay the man. Interesting way of looking at that as far as TJ Watt's contract. We're talking about one possible contract extension to a new possible contract extension. Of course, the topic during the course of the weekend, um, TJ Watt has been revealed that he's not participating in all team drills because they're waiting on that contract to be signed. Keith Butler, the defensive coordinator, says, hey, look, I don't mind it. I want him to get paid and make as much as they can. Is this a major point of concern as far as whether or not TJ Watt's going to be participating before the season? I'd like to think it's not. But on the other side of that coin, Chris, they're talking about the cap space that they have and comparing him to other players. And the numbers do speak for themselves. It's a guy who's a multiple time all pro multiple time pro bowler. It seems like now is the time you strike when the iron is hot as far as TJ Watt may be cashing in big. Well, Josh, I've got to say, frankly, I'm surprised you didn't pick my tweet that said Antonio Brown was a more deserving Hall of Famer than Marquise Pouncey or Heinz Ward for the tweet of the night. It's a 25 I guess you minute didn't show. Ask Mike I know. I guess as, as Mike Tomlin would say, you didn't want to add to the brush fire. You wanted to focus on ball, and I understand <laughs> exactly. that. We focus on ball on this show, which exactly. is apparently now, you, you know, it's code for football. Listen, T.J. Watt, I, I flip-flopped on this as somebody called me out on Twitter a couple weeks ago, filling in for Paul Zeiss, maybe got my brain infected with what happens in that time slot sometimes. I said, maybe you hold off. You maintain a, a financial lightness on your feet if you're the Steelers, and you just – franchise him and kind of make this ugly the way you have with other players but came to my senses pay the man Andrew's right and if the cap is going to go way up next year like mm. some people think it might I think all the way to 208 and a half million this is the time to do it this is the time where you can if you're the Steelers uh, have sort of grounds to say hey TJ maybe not 30 how about 28 and a half or something like that how about we get you just past Joey Bosa because think about it this way. Say they don't get a deal done. He plays on his number for this year, right? Hmm. He's probably going to have, if the last three years of his career are any indication, somewhere in the neighborhood of 14 or 15 sacks. He's probably going to be very high up in the defensive player of the year voting. He might even win it, especially if Aaron Donald, say, misses a couple of games. If that happens, guess what? Cap goes up, T.J. Watt's price goes up, and suddenly you are paying an even greater premium if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I'll summarize this again in three words. Pay the man. Can't argue with that too much. Let's go to the phone lines. We got Tom in South Hills. Tom, you're on the nightly sports call. So, sounds hey, like we lost Tom. Well, we got Matt on the line too. Matt, you're on the nightly sports call. Hey, sorry. Hey, guys, this is the Pirates. I just have a quick question, couple for you. In July and August, the pitching staff looks worse to mm. me. The batters all look worse. This is supposed to be the, hey, let's evaluate talent. It seems like the talent, again, is deteriorating. I, maybe it wasn't there, and it, I, I don't know. It seems like the pitching staff is getting no guidance from the, the pitching coach. Well, there's nobody on that, there's nobody on that pitching staff, I think, uh, that they had hugely high hopes for other than Keller, and he continues to be a massive disappointment. My personal disappointments that Brubaker, after briefly showing a little bit of the polish early in the season that you would have hoped Keller had, uh, he's tailed off badly. Another point of concern here, hate to be Mr. Negativity, Brian Reynolds has still been pretty good, but mm. Key Brian Hayes, what are we looking at here? Uh, I don't know if that hand injury was something related to the handmate bone where mm -hmm. you have your power sapped and it hurts you as a hitter, but this has been pretty... Not like troublesome yet because it's so early in his career, but it's been pretty discouraging to watch him at the plate by and large uh, this part of the season since he came back. Yeah, I have to agree with the part about Hayes, especially when you're talking about that wrist injury because that's usually the first thing that suffers the most when you're re recovering is that power as far as swinging the bat. To your point about the pitching, the one guy I did actually feel a lot strongly about, and I still do, is Bryce Wilson. He might be the one guy that I still am bullish on. Um, I think I jinxed to Will Crow because Will Crow had two good starts and I pointed it out and things never really got better after that. I'd make the case though with Bryce Wilson and especially with Will Crow and some of the starts he's had a league average offense probably helps some of this pitching and probably helps the outcome of some of these games. And I'll say that to say this. I'll ask you this question, Chris. The Pirates got Maddoxed tonight by Adam Wainwright. 
who's 39 we years old. We better explain that term, by the way. We better We're, explain that term quickly. That's when you get down. shut out on 100 pitches or less by somebody. It's uh, because Greg Maddox did that at least a couple times in his career, and it's a catchy name that's stuck. Yes, and what, like I said, 39-year-old Adam Wainwright, same age as me, same age as Ben Roethlisberger, who's considered by, be, by many to be on his way out the door in the National Football League. My question to you, with that revelation of information, is this the low point of the season, or is there another time we can say, hey, it probably doesn't get any worse than this? I mean, this is the – Mike Tomlin called it the dog days of summer for his football team and training camp. It feels certainly like we're in the dog days for the Pirates. Uh, the Diamondback sweep is not that far in the rearview mirror. They yep. had the brief bout of competence against the Giants. But, yeah, this is – this is a low point, but you know what it would serve them to do is keep right on losing and hope that teams like the Diamondbacks, like the Orioles, actually pass them up in the standings and get them pick one round one again next year. There can be some sort of light at the end of the tunnel because this is the last season where I think if you're Ben Charrington, you get a free pass on what happens on the field with your major league team because after that, it has to be about showing tangible signs, and that means wins and losses in addition to player development at the big league level. Yeah, and to the, the question from the caller, he talked about it, this being the evaluation period. Now, here's the caveat to that. There was no guarantee that the evaluations would be good. It was just that there would yeah, be evaluations. They have to see what they have. And right now, there isn't really much to go off of. And, and to be fair, oh, I don't think there was much to expect going in. I, I tell people all the time. It was Hayes and Reynolds. Yeah, I mean, it, it was, it was the Reynolds. pitching and it yes. was Hayes and Reynolds. And, and Reynolds has been mostly as advertised, better than I thought he would be. I've been encouraged by his performance. but And we know Hayes' defense is always going to be there. But, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, the bat playing was going to be what made Hayes special, if it did. Like, if he could hit you 280 to 290 and he could hit 20 home runs, you know, knock in runs and be a guy who didn't look out of place in the middle of an order – that was going to be what turned him into a star and borderline superstar com uh, combined, excuse me, with the defense. If you get a guy that's kind of a weak stick over there, but he's a, gr he's a gold glove defender, best in the league, that's a very useful player, but it's not necessarily a franchise cornerstone type. I'd, I'd have to agree with that. And it, it does, does stand to reason, as much as we've talked about Hayes possibly being the best third baseman in the National League, I've always said, well, you got Nolan Arenado over here who's been doing it for more than half a decade, <laughs> who's got the Hall of Fame resume. But he's got the resume with the glove, and he's got it with the bat. If you don't see it with both, it's probably not going to be as strong of a, of a sentiment as far as how good he can really be. We got Tom again. Let's try Tom again in the South Hills. Tom, you're on the nightly sports call. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. I'm going to talk about the Pirates. Uh, Chris, do you think their pregame preparation and postgame process includes Sherbert? <laughs> oh, come on. No, but you know what? I'll tell you what, if their pregame preparation and their postgame process included a healthy uh, heaping dose of sure bit, I think things would turn around at the major league level very quickly. And probably the good vibes from the correct pronunciation of, again, sure bit, uh, I think that would seep down into the minor leagues and you would have all these players they just drafted and some of these prospects already on the radar uh, really champing at the bit to get up to the big league club to have more sure bit. But I do appreciate, Tom, uh, tying in last yesterday's PM team topic of the day uh, into today's nightly sports call. I, that warms the cockles of my heart. Tom, you had to take the fresh sea off the can of worms, didn't you? Just, wow. It's only a 25-minute show as we get further into this. We got to take another break. We'll wrap up when we come back. Stick around. <laughs> 